Hi, and welcome to this video on NumBar. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you how to double the speed of your Python code by using the Python library NumBar. So here's how the NumBar documentation describes NumBar. So NumBar is an open source just-in-time compiler that translates a subset of Python code, so a certain part of the Python code, and NumPy code into fast machine code. So the idea is that NumBar will look through your Python code and then translate some of it during the runtime into machine code so that the whole thing executes faster. So three things that describe NumBar is that it's fast, so it uses this just-in-time compiler to make your Python code faster. It's also minimal in the sense that it has really few dependencies. So for instance, you don't need to install a C or C++ compiler, you just need Python and the Python library NumBar. And finally, it's easy to learn. You just need to add a decorator here or there for your functions, and that's more or less it. So you don't need to learn a whole new language in any sense, this should be pretty easy to learn. So personally, I found NumBar really easy to use. So what I will do in this video is to first show you a bit of the documentation of NumBar, then I will talk about installation, then I will give you some code examples so that you can see how NumBar actually works, and then finally we'll have a conclusion. So the first step is just having a tiny peek at the NumBar documentation. So first of all, I just love the logo, this is the Python snake, and here we have an arrow indicating that it's fast. So this is the quote I had from earlier, and here you can see some of the basic examples. So as you can see here, so NumBar translates Python functions to optimize machine code at runtime using what's called an LLVM compiler library. You don't really need to know what this means, but in essence, NumPy will look through your code and optimize it. So here you can see a short code example. I don't want to go through this, but just highlight the important features. So you import something called JIT from NumBar, then you add a JIT decorator here to a usual Python function, and then everything will just run faster. So I'll talk more about the details of this later. So the second point is that NumBar is specifically built for scientific computing. So it's really good at working with NumPy arrays and also at functions and looping. We'll talk a bit more about this towards the end, but there are many things that NumBar cannot speed up, for instance, like pandas data frames. But luckily, a lot of the things that are in scientific computing and say machine learning are using NumPy functions, loops, and so on. Finally, you can also parallelize your algorithms through NumBar for both CPUs and GPUs. I will not talk any Anything about this in this video, but just so that you're aware, this is also a feature of NumBar. So that's it for the documentation, now let's just quickly talk about installation of NumBar. So I'll just install NumBar through Conda. To do this I'll simply run Conda install dash c NumBar NumBar here. So I already have this installed, but if you don't then just run this command in your other Conda prompt, and here's also some instructions that you can find for installing with pip. So I'll leave the link to this page in the description of the video. Great, so that's it for the installation, now let's head over to the coding examples in Jupyter Notebook. Here we are in an essentially blank Jupyter Notebook sheet, I've just added some import statements and headers here, so you can see that I import from NumBar both JIT and NJIT, and I'll explain what both of these mean, and I also import NumPy as NP. Let me run this cell here. So here you can see that it verifies that NumBar is installed. Now I just want first without NumBar to write essentially a function using some of the features of NumPy and then afterwards I'll show you how to do it with NumBar. So let me first just define a variable x where I will take let's say 10 million and just reshape this into a thousand by let's see thousand by thousand and I need a million so hopefully that works fine. Now let me define a function let me just call this NumPy features. So this should take in a matrix. The matrix is an NP array. And actually for the return statement, let me just make it sure that it doesn't return anything. I just wanted to do some work. So the main point of this function is just to illustrate some common features of NumPy. By the way, so what I'm adding here, this syntax and this thing here, this is just type hints in Python. If you're not used to it, then don't really worry about it. So let me just define something called cosine trace, set this to be 0, 0.0, and then let me loop something, so for i in range, let me take my matrix and look at the length of the first axis in a sense here. So what I'll do is to take this cosine trace thing and updating this by taking the cosine, and I'll take this cosine function of all the diagonal entries. And finally, I'll just take my matrix and then simply add the cosine trace thing. 
like this. If you're confused about the function, that's because it's pretty random. I've just done some things in NumPy that one could do. So if you look at this, I've made a for loop here. I've used a built-in NumPy function. And finally here, I've used what's called broadcasting because this cosine trace is a number and matrix is a matrix, so a two-dimensional array. And then this value here, the cosine trace is broadcasted all over the matrix, resulting in a new matrix. So this is simply a more or less random function illustrating some NumPy features. So let me just run the cell. And here I have a syntax error. This is just because I'm missing the in here. Let me just run it again. And that's the function. Now let's actually time the function. So for this, I'll use the magic command time. And then I'll call numpy features on my x here. So if I run this, you can see that it took 16 milliseconds. I mean, it's not incredibly slow, but it's still a reasonable amount of time. Now let's try to do the same with number. And to spare you the pain, of course, I'll just copy this paste it here. Now we'll look at the difference. So to utilize number in this code, you only need to do one thing. Let's add a decorator. And the decorator is called JIT. One could do it like this, but you should always do it with no Python equals true as an argument in the decorator. I'll come back to this later. So now let me run it. So of course, then I want to do the same here. I want to time it. So let me copy it, paste it and run it. Now you'll see something interesting. Well, the interesting thing is that it's a lot slower. So, oh my God, what's happening? Here it's 60 milliseconds, here is 1.5 seconds. The first time we run a function after optimizing it with number, it will take longer time. And that's because there is a compilation process. So in the first time here, this function, or at least part of the functions has been compiled into optimized machine code. So the first time it's really slow, but all the subsequent times, so if I now run it again, is a lot faster. Now it's at six milliseconds, previously it was 16, but this point that I made here is very important. The first time you run the function, it will be even slower, but afterwards it will be a lot faster. And luckily with loads of functions, you need to run them a lot of times. So that makes this really, really useful. So I promised to tell you about this no Python argument. So first of all, specifying no Python equals true is actually precisely the same as just deleting it and saying and it. So if I do this, first run this cell, now run the cell here. First time it will take a long time, so it took almost 600 milliseconds. Then if you run it again, it will be fast again. So no Python equals true is the same as ngit. But what does it mean? So if you have no Python equal true or the ngit, number will warn you if it cannot really optimize the function in any way. And this is what you really want. So if you don't have this special argument, it will just pass silently and you will just get a slower function. You will get no optimization and you will just get essentially the number overhead on top of it. In 99% of all cases, you want number to tell you, hey, I cannot make this faster. Maybe you should just remove this decorator for this function. This is not just my personal preference. This is backed up by the number documentation. So please, please, please always use the ngit or just the jit with the argument no Python equals true. So before we end the coding, I just wanted to show you one example. So I told you previously that number doesn't optimize any Python code. It's especially good at NumPy and looping. So here you can see an example from the number documentation where it doesn't work as well. So here you have some function called use pandas. And the problem is that in use pandas, you make some data frame from a dictionary, but number doesn't really know about data frames. So here it adds a single value to all of the data frame entries, but number doesn't really understand what this means at all. And finally, it returns the covariance of the data frame, but all of this number doesn't really understand because it doesn't understand pandas. So if you have here the JIT decorator, as they do, with no like no Python equals true, this will just always run slower. So first of all, you shouldn't use number for a function that solely uses, for instance, pandas. But secondly, if you want to try it out, then I strongly suggest to use the ngit so that number will give you an alert like, hey, we don't really do this kind of thing. Maybe you should just remove it. And that's it. I just wanted to show you some of the really basic features of number. Other than this, there are more in-length tutorials about number, both in video form and in blog posts, and of course, the number documentation. If you look at the description, I'll give you a few more links if you're interested. But for the most part, the NGIT decorator is really the only thing you need. So I suggest that you just try it out and see how you like it. Some people claim that you can get like 100 times the performance of your code, and that's certainly true in some very special examples, but I don't really believe that you can overall take your Python code base and make it 100 times faster with number. But definitely, if you're using a lot of scientific computation, then you could definitely speed it up very significantly. So number is a great tool for this, and as you've seen, it doesn't really take a long time to learn. So if you like the content we're providing here, then like, subscribe, and I'll see you again in a future video.